ಪರ್ಯಮಹೆ ಜ್ಞಾನಲಿಂಗೇಶ್ವರಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ಮೋ ಗುರು ಪ್ರಚೋದಯತೆ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಯೋಗ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗೀತಾನಂದ ಗಿರಿ ಗುರು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ವಣಕ್ಕಂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಗುಡ್ ನೂನ್ ಗುಡ್ ನೈಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಎವರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಲಾಗಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಿಂದು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇನೇಬಲ್ಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಶೇರ್ we grow because when you share what you are doing is you are opening up the pathway of the flow when we don't share we are blocking the pathway and this is why it is so important to share the teachings of yoga especially the inner deeper higher aspects because when we share these teachings we are verbalizing we are putting into a verbal frame the concepts and in doing so we are connecting thought word and action in a very dynamic way we are creating an integrated pathway and when we do that these teachings then open up to us more deeply many people think that they have to keep it to themselves when you keep it to yourself what happens is that it most probably will degenerate and decay it is only when you share now when you are sharing you have to be careful because you have to make sure the people who are getting it are ready for it but then also you realize that each person receives that for which they are ready at that moment so again i think in sharing no one is really the loser i don't think there is any loser in sharing and again people think if i share everything i have my students will go to some other teacher and i feel that is such a limited perspective because the more you share the more you are going to learn the more you are go- going to grow and again if they have to go to another teacher so be it why are you thinking of them as a commodity why are you thinking of them as a property is their choice and that is why it is so important that we get out of this rat race dog eat dog attitude that has percolated into yoga and yoga therapy these days we need to focus on the bigger picture we need to understand the essence we need to understand the connectivity that is there if it's truly to be yoga and if yoga therapy is to retain yoga in it this evening at 7:30 pm indian time amma ji will be online live for the ministry of ayush and a wonderful moment because I have been trying for the past few months to get her online and it's finally happening. So please note it down an opportunity to listen to a truly amazing woman and a woman who has lived yoga who breathes yoga and if you find anything good in me well it's mostly what she has put into me the seed that swami ji and amma ji have put is actually what i am i never claim to be anything else than that the seed grows and manifests as it should coming back to today's topic of the bindus we were talking about the concept of the bhu madhya bindu the bindu that is at the midpoint between the i browse now this is an important point because the two i browse signify 
the duality the two halves of the brain so it's not just the eyebrows do not do not get stuck with the eyebrows the two eyebrows signify the duality of the right and the left brain the li- right brain which is all about quality and the left brain which is all about quantity the qualitative aspect which is the right brain and the quantitative aspect which is the left brain what is right brain qualitative saraswati what is left brain quantitative lakshmi so the saraswati and the lakshmi lie within our two halves of the brain bicameral brain that we human beings have the eyebrows the two eyebrows they represent this duality and people are often caught in this extreme or that extreme and this is why it is often said if you are totally in your left brain which means you are focused only on the quantitative aspect if you are totally in your left brain there is nothing right about it if you are totally in your left brain there's nothing right about it and if you are totally in your right brain there may be nothing left and i think it's a beautiful statement because this uh, debate between quality and quantity most of the research in yoga is quantitative and yesterday i was discussing with a senior professor at our university the need for qualitative research methods because otherwise we are only measuring blood pressure heart rate and you know changes that can be quantified we are missing the qualitative changes the transformative changes of yoga which is why we need a mixed model research where we have qualitative and quantitative parameters being evaluated you have both your eyebrows the duality and in the center is the bhu madhya bindu it is the center where the balance can be there between the dualities it is the point of balance it is the fulcrum it is the midpoint where balance can manifest that yukta that yoked part of us the integrated part of us where the right and the left the opposites do not affect you any more that is actually the definition of asana according to maharishi patanjali when you are in that stira and stukam and the dwandvas the opposites the pairs of opposites dwa dwa and uh, dwa means two dwa dwa the two twos they always come together they will cease to affect you you have transcended the dualities and that is why the bhu madhya bindu offers us an opportunity to transcend the dualities we are normally locked either in this half or this half we need to transcend it by bringing both together and rising above the duality duality is very much a human approach a human made approach you are different than me you speak a different language you have a different color you have a different body shape you speak you know greek and i speak latin and someone speaks sanskrit and someone speaks tamil okay come on we are all human beings we are all communicating you look white somebody looks black somebody looks brown somebody looks green somebody looks blue well we are all human beings somebody is tall somebody is short somebody is fat somebody yeah we are all human beings you know adi shankara in his dasa shloki he negates all these human made divisions they are not universal made the universe is one you need one oneness that's why it's a universe 
it has a sense of oneness in it, integrativeness in it. But we human beings have started to see the differences rather than the unitiveness. That unitiveness is what is essential for us to grow as a human being. All the distinctions are below here. And that is why when you are caught in the lower responses, you are always, if you are caught in the sensory world, you are always going to be looking at the differences. You look different. You taste different. You feel different. You sound different. And so we start to have prejudices. We have stereotypes. And we start to discriminate. One of the worst things that we human beings do is discriminate amongst all living beings. And then worse, we, distinct, we discriminate against fellow living human beings. There can be no worse crime than discriminating against another human being based on these human-made divisions. We need to look at the unitiveness. And that is the message here. Adi Shankara in the Dasa Sloki, and he talks about this. He negates all this. And there's one verse where he talks about colors. He talks about body shapes. Huh? Did he ever knew where we human beings would degenerate to? Na kubjam, na peenam, na hasvam, na dhirgam. Na peenam. Na raktam, na peenam. He talks about that. And we are not these different. Na shuklam, na krishnam, na raktam, na peetam. Na kubjam, na peenam, na hasvam, na dhirgam. I am not all these divisions that are made. Arupam tata. Without form, we are beyond form. That oneness, energy. Arupam tata jyoti rakara katvat. That jyoti, that inner light is what is there in us. And that is why when we focus on this point, the Bhrumadya Bindu, we are making an attempt to transcend the dualities that result in discrimination. We are becoming a discerning metacognitive human being who is not discriminating anymore. Who is understanding from a higher level. That is why this is the place where the manas comes alive. The manas comes alive and you become a true manushya, manav, one who has manas. That is the root of the word human, man, manushya, man, human, one who has manas. That is where that comes. So the Brahmadya is not just one point that the yogis decided to focus on. They had nothing better to do. So focus on your midpoint between your eyebrows. Huh? No. The yogis understood the oneness. So when you focus here, you are starting to make that attempt, that quantum leap to go from duality to non-duality, from dvaitam to advaitam, from discrimination to discernment, from reactionary behavior to responsive behavior. From reflexive to reflective. This is the jump being made when you focus on the blue madhya. So how can we focus on the blue madhya? There is a very beautiful practice in the Gita Nanda tradition called the prana kriya. Prana kriya. And we use the prana for this. A focus on the prana moving. A kriya, so it's a systematic rational movement practice and it could kriyas could be at the body level the emotion level the mind level and when they go into the mind level they become what is called a pra kriya and they, they become more subtle the kriyas are more at the body level pra kriya jnana yoga raja yoga pra kriyas so the prana kriya is one of those pra kriyas though it is termed as prana kriya which is a pratyahara practice. Now, so many people talk about pratyahara. Like everybody talks about the weather and nobody does anything about it. We talk about pratyahara and people say, what can I do for it? And we say, meditate. 
get them out of the office. It's like you go to doctors and they say you have all these problems, you need to relax. And then you say, okay, doctor, tell me how to relax. Relax, relax, just relax. Because they themselves don't know how to relax. See, the problem is, we ourselves don't have the answer, so we just push the ball back. The hot potato is thrown back to the other person. So when they don't know what to do, meditate. How to, when to, <laughs> throw it to them. Swamaji's teachings are one of the few places where you actually find techniques that can enable Pratyahara to manifest. And the Prana Kriya is one of those Pratyahara practices that enables us to move beyond the senses. That is what Pratyahara is. Pratya means to go against Ahara, food. Here the senses are constantly looking for nourishment. Your eyes go out wanting to see something. Your ears are always going out trying to hear something. Your, your senses are always outward going. They are seeking nourishment. Ahara. Pratya means the opposite. So instead of letting your senses go out, you are bringing them back in. You are going in. The senses are going out. Now when you let your mind go out with the senses, you become the mess. You get entangled in the web of the senses called Indriya Jala. Jala is the snare, the web. We get caught up in the Indriya Jala when the mind goes with the senses. In Pratyahara, the mind is withdrawn inside. When the mind is withdrawn inside, the senses have to come back. Instead of the senses leading the mind, the mind leads the senses. Isn't that a beautiful change? Satya Ahara. Instead of the senses leading the mind, let's go out there to see something, let's go out there to feel something, let's go out there and have fun. The mind is saying, let's go in and the senses say, okay, fine. This is why Satya Ahara is not sensory withdrawal. But it is a withdrawal from the senses. We have been translating it totally wrong all these years. Because when you say sensory withdrawal, people think I close my eyes, I am in Pratyahara. In fact, some time back at a yoga festival, I saw an Indian Swami who sat up on the stage in front of the audience. He said, okay, everybody sit down. Now you close your eyes and we are all in Pratyahara now. And I'm like, seriously? An Indian Swami. You sit and close your eyes, you are in Pratyahara. I wish it was so simple. Now, Maharishi Patanjali would not have needed all his teachings if it was so simple, okay? The human race would not be the mess we are if it was so simple. The senses, they are constantly like five horses bolting at the same time. And you don't know which one to control. They are all five bolting at the same time. And what do you, how do you control them? They are all, all running out at the same time. The senses are just running out, running out, running out, running out. And the mind is brought back in. Where is the mind? It is here. That is why you have the spinal centers associated with the senses. And then you come to the sixth center, the Ajna. That is where mind, the element of mind starts to come in. And that is why in the Prana Kriya, we are working at this point. And what we do is that we perform the Savitri Pranayama. No prizes for guessing that. Gita Nanda tradition, Savitri Pranayama. It's part and parcel, hand and glove. What we do is that we are going to be performing a few rounds of Savitri Pranayama. Then, at this midpoint between the eyebrows, you start to visualize the prana moving out as you breathe in. So, as you breathe in, the prana is moving out. From here, it is moving out. And as you breathe out, the prana is moving back and coming back in, into the center of the folds of the brain. Remember, this is the point, the Brumadya Bindu, where we are trying to transcend the dualities of right and left. We are transcending the Dvandvas. Dvandva Anabhigata. 
And people say that's for asana. No. Asana is a state of being. Asi means to be. So what we are trying to do is come to a state of being where the opposites do not pull us or push us off balance. And that is why the Prana Kriya is performed at the Bhumadhya uh, Bindu. So what we are doing is as we breathe in with the Savitri, breathing in, two, three, four, five, six, and then hold, one, two, three, breathing out, one, two, three, four, five, six, and go deep in, one, two, three. Why going out? Because this is the senses going out. So you are watching the senses going out. But then you are saying we all want to come back and we want to be settled inside ourselves. So the senses are going out. We are saying, okay, fine. Let's see where you are going. This is the prana moving with the senses. And then we are saying, but I wanted to come back in and at that exhalation, I want to go deep inside so that I am settling down. I am going outward. I am part of the sensory world but the sensory world will not affect me it will not influence me because i am going back and settling in my own nature swarupe avasthanam and this then goes into the next bindu when you go in a few inches you go into the agnya bindu so the up the um, bindu where we are doing the prana kriya becomes the point where you are going out and coming back in. And when you come in, if you go in a few inches into your brain, you are actually hitting the Ajna Bindu, which is physically correlated with your hypothalamus pituitary axis. The Ajna Bindu is physically correlated. I'm not saying it is the Ajna Bindu because the Bindus are at the junction between Vijnana Maya and Mano Maya. The hypothalamus pituitary is still anatomical and physiological, annamaya pranamaya. So definitely the bindu is at a new dimension compared to the anatomical and physiological functionality. So we are saying correlated. That is the closest word we can come to having this. Okay. So let's sit. Sitting with your lower part of the body, creating a beautiful base, a well-aligned spine that is erect, aligning the lower, middle and upper parts of your spine, your head and neck, aligned. And now at this point, let's begin a few rounds of Savitri Pranayama. Breathing out, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. In, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. Bring your mind and its focus to the midpoint between the two eyebrows and as we breathe in, Feeling the prana moving out at this point for a short distance. Doesn't have to be too much, but just let it be a natural distance as we breathe in. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three. And breathe out. Coming back inward. Three, four, five, six and holding in the folds of the brain. Breathe in, moving out as you in, three, four, five, six, holding, two, three, coming back, out, 
two, three, four, five, six. Settling as you hold, two, three. Moving out. In, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three. Coming back, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three. Moving out. In, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three. Coming back, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three. In, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, Four, five, six, four, two. Just settle into that inner point where the breath has taken us, a point where you are in and around Bindu called the Agnya Bindu, Agnya Bindu, which is a focal point of consciousness within the Agnya Chakra. Enabling a beautiful sense of intuition to manifest. A point where the higher spiritual intelligence can manifest. Dispassionate, non-attached, metacognitive. Discernment can manifest at this point. Transcending the lower senses and letting the mind withdraw within, like the tortoise withdrawing its limbs as it goes into its shell. Us withdrawing our mind internally. And as the mind comes in, the senses have no choice but to come inwards. Because the mind is the source of energy for the senses. Begin to move your fingers and toes a bit, rubbing your palms together, placing the warm palms with the warmth over the eyes, the forehead and the head, coming back to the externalized world. Such a beautiful, such a beautiful uh, experience this prana kriya gives us because we start to realize that the senses are going out, but we have a chance, an opportunity to go back in. And when we settle inside, it is so amazing, so amazing. Wishing you all a wonderful day wherever you are. And just remember, Ammaji is going to be online. Um, I have shared the link on as many Facebook pages as I can and also in the email. And if not, the Ministry of Ayush Facebook page, 7.30 this evening. Uh, Ammaji will be live sharing her thoughts on the essence of yoga. And uh, I believe that the recording will be available for those who are in different time zones. And then once those recordings are there, we'll share them also. Thank you for being with me. Hari Om Tatsar.